Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Vancouver, British Columbia for OpenStack Summit, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're on the back end of the, the day three, a lot of action here. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced instructor, signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Uh, next guest is the money guy in the community, Ryan Floyd, founder, uh, partner of Storm Ventures. Very active in infrastructure, very active in cloud, very active in OpenStack. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. It's good to be here. We yeah. uh, chatted at reInvent. Um, at Amazon, different entrepreneurial marketplace than OpenStack. A lot more entrepreneurship going on here than in AWS. Um, so I got to ask you, obviously, a lot of innovations happening. How do you look at the landscape? I mean, you look at the, you know, you look down from the mountain, you're going to go hit the field of, of, of venture, capital, entrepreneurship here in OpenStack. I'm head first. It's, it's complicated, <laughs> I mean, it's diverse. Yeah. So how do you attack it? How do, what's your thesis? How do you lay it all out? And how do you sort it out as an investor? Well, um, so in the case of Amazon, it, it got sorted out you know, for me. It's very hard to invest in the Amazon ecosystem. I mean, uh, the, uh, the AWS ecosystem is amazing. Amazon's done an amazing job. Google's doing an amazing job. Microsoft. But as a venture investor, there's nothing for me to do there. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it's great to go to the show. It's great to meet the entrepreneurs. Uh, and for businesses that I think make sense inside of Amazon, that's fantastic, but I can't do a lot. So, so then I end up saying, okay, what are other enterprises doing? And that's what's led me to OpenStack. That's why I'm here today. I may be the only venture investor still coming, but I'm but I'm here. We saw a couple guys. Menlo Ventures is here, so we'll plug okay, for those Sandeep, guys. Okay, Sandeep's good. Um, <laughs> Sandeep's here. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got a nose for this stuff too. He just um, bought MetaCloud, so yeah, he, he, he needs he needs to fly <laughs> the flag. <laughs> he's yeah. got to fly the flag. You know, <laughs> he's pounding the flesh and pounding the pavement. <laughs> um, but it's hard. I mean, we just talked to Lou Tucker, and you know, there's huge industry experience all pointing to successful OpenStack. Um, what are you looking for? I mean, is there certain kinds of company you're looking for? Um, besides great team, is there a certain niche or is there a certain area that you like more than others? Um, well, I can, I can tell you, there's a couple of ingredients I think that are really important today, maybe versus you know, a couple of years ago, like San Diego, say, right? So I was down in San Diego, and soon, at San Diego, the, the big guys hadn't really entered the fray yet. Uh, I think it was easier for a startup to sell more of a you know, kind of core product focus. I think today, you know, with, with between Red Hat, IBM, EMC, Dell, Cisco, I mean, all, all these folks, in OpenStack and committed. It's not just, you know, it's not just a banner. I mean, they, they, they are committed. It's not a marketing program. It's not a marketing thing. I mean, they're not just here to be here. I mean, they are here, they are in it. They've got people here at the show. You got to do something that's different. You got to do something, you're trying to compete with those folks head to head with a distribution, uh, some feature set that you, do, it's just going to be tough. So I think you got to find something that you can differentiate around uh, and, and make it go out of it. One of, the, one of the pieces of advice I've been giving a lot of entrepreneurs right now is if they're not clear on what that product is, uh, think about services. Um, it's hard to scale, granted, but I think right now, getting inside of customers, focusing on the services, there's a huge need. Every enterprise customer I talk to has a need for service work. So if you can get in there, help that customer be successful, it's ultimately going to lead to well, a better understanding of how to build your product. This is interesting, first of all, you, we, we uh, think highly of you, you're a great investor, got a great nose and great mindset, but this is a contrarian view, this notion of services. Most VCs, well, I want to see things buttoned up, go, 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 revenue, get some scale, I want to get some liquidity. Here, in emerging markets like this, services, it's okay to have a front-end business model of services while the product market develops um, certainly that's a great approach. Is that, is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, yes, exactly. Not necessarily I mean, be services that's right. per se. Ultimately, you got to have a product, because ultimately a services business isn't going to scale. But I, I mean, I think you know, exhibit A is Mirantis. Yeah. I mean, they have done a phenomenal job uh, of building up a business that initially started as a services business, getting the trust uh, and confidence of a very large customer base, and as a consequence, they are in every single major OpenStack RFP, and they're taking on you know, everybody that's out there, Red Hat, IBM, everybody. Yeah, they're so winning. They're and, they're win and they're winning. Yeah. Um, and they started did you out invest services. in them? I, 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 uh, I did not. I passed not only once, but I passed twice. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you how foolish I am. Uh, so. yeah, you should have called the <laughs> We would have been data for it. No, we like, no, Mirantis was poo-pooed. I mean, people were taking pot shots at Mirantis saying, hey, this is a small, it's a one-trick pony. They're using their own expertise to leverage OpenStack. But what they did was they delivered a service that was hardened for customers to stand up open 
open stack quickly for POCs. Yeah, no, that right. works. No, they did. They did. Okay. And I mean, you know, and, and this company that I was an investor in MetaCloud that we sold to Cisco, I mean, you know, arguably it has a service approach too. The problem that they solved was basically how do you deliver open stack as a service, full up solution, because that's what enterprises want. And so, you know, MetaCloud was a version of that. Yep. Made it work, and I think that's where they found their success. So, so Ryan, where are we with the money in, in OpenStack? You know, last year when we came to the show, I kind of looked at the whole market and I said, you know, most companies, if they're interested in making 25 to 50 million, it probably is a good time. But, you know, Red Hat says they've got a couple hundred customers paying for what they're doing with OpenStack. Uh, I think somebody in the foundation, maybe it was the survey, said, you know, there's about four or 500 in production uh, for OpenStack. So, you know, it's, it's not billions of dollars out there right now. Not yet. You know, w you know how close are we to hitting that inflection point? Point, you know, when, you know, if somebody's putting a billion dollars <laughs> into this business, you know, are they going to get a return in the next five years? What, what, what's your take on the money? Well, I think, so uh, maybe we should separate out startups yeah. and the incumbents. Yeah. So the incumbents, I don't think have a choice because their fundamental business is, is under siege because uh, the, 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 you know, the arc of kind of IT bends towards open source, right, with time. So, uh, they have to be in it and they have to make a huge investment for the long term. Startups, I think it's harder right now. I think it's harder for startups to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in the market and expect to get a near term return. I don't know if that's a great uh, investment strategy, but the incumbents, it's exactly what I would be doing. If I was you know, Cisco right now, I'd be putting a lot of money behind OpenStack. It's the future of the business. And so the big companies are also having a proprietary kind of aha moment where it's like, okay, we have to move to a competitive advantage. Big discussion here is, where's the differentiation? Where's the new lock-in spec? And we were saying earlier, speed and agility can create economies of scale that is barriers to entry and or some competitive advantage. So as a, v, as a VC, you guys always look at this competition, yep. competitive map. What is the differentiation opportunity for a startup? And also, the big companies were also are buyers of startups. So like, you're going to see EMC, I'm sure you bring the checkbook out, IBM makes acquisitions, so you got Oracle. So there's going to be a lot of interesting um, potential exit opportunities, certainly for the M&A side, but maybe some big public offerings. How do you view that competitive differentiation? And what's your observation out there and what people can do to be successful? So um, I think for the big guys, actually the, the differentiation is very easy. They just have to execute. I mean, I think, you know, th that sounds simple, but I think being able to, to just execute and deliver an open stack solution to large enterprise customers is not easy to do today for the, for the big incumbents. So, and that's why they're losing a lot of deals to Marantis. So I think that's, that's job number one. From a startup standpoint, it's a little harder question to answer. Um, I haven't done a traditional product focused open stack company since SwiftStack, which was a number of years ago. SwiftStack differentiates by adding a lot of enterprise functionality on top of Swift, which I still think is a great strategy. I don't know what the equivalent would be in a new project, the most recent investments we made, we made an investment in a company called Nublu, which is uh, a bunch of folks out of Mercado Libre uh, down in Latin America, and they're focused on the Latin American market where we think there's going to be a good opportunity long term, and they're going to focus on that there. Um, and then personally, I invest in a company called Selenia that's just focused on, on services. Uh, again, all around execution. But um, I don't services think- Services as in professional services? Professional or? services, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Ryan, you know, What's your thoughts on you know business models for monetizing open source? Uh, you, you know we had Kismetic on earlier, t taking uh, you know Kubernetes, Kubernetes and, yeah. and trying to take that. We had CoreOS on who takes a couple of projects, and then they've got Tectonic yep. to make that. Uh, we're going to be at DockerCon uh, to Docker Docker uh, <laughs> and everything like that. Right. Uh, you know, there's one billion dollar you know open source company out there. It's Red Hat. You know, so you know. Is there another billion dollar one? Is you know Red Hat going to go you know another billion dollars on some of this product? You know where where are we with monetizing open source? Well, I mean, I'd I'd, I'd say it's not e exactly. Right. I mean, there's other coming. My 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 sequel was a yeah. was a very successful company. Uh, Sun's still got a ton of open source. Oracle's got a ton of open source that are sort <laughs> of embedded inside the bigger companies. Yeah. So, I think you're right. The pure play. Maybe we only look at you know at Red Hat. But um, I think there's I think there's a lot of money that's going to be made there. Or, you know, with time, I think it's not going to be around a pure support model. I I don't think that stands up. Uh, I think it's hard to build a large revenue stream off that. But there's a lot of functionality that the open source community is not going to necessarily focus on building that enterprises value. I think the other big misconception is it's not that enterprises want stuff for free. That's yeah. not their goal. Yeah. Their goal is not free. Their goal is a solution that doesn't provide, uh, doesn't doesn't give them lock-in. That's what they want. Yeah, no, and, and in a world of competing against Amazon, you need to bake it into the software to get those marginal economics, otherwise it's not going to scale. Um, and if you're competing against Amazon, if you're getting too much margin, probably somebody's going to be able to knock you off with that's something right. cheaper. That's right, that's right, that's <laughs> right. 
So final question for you, just your take on venture in general these days, the funds, everyone's got mega funds now. What's your, what's your take on the whole angel investing, angel list, micro angels, whatever they're called these days, super angels, micro VCs. Um, what's going on in the venture landscape? What's your, what's your take on? We are Just in good times right now. It is good times. We are in the the. So I started venture investing with Storm. I started Storm in 2000. So I'm a dinosaur, uh, by most by most people's measure, and we're in the the best sustained period that I can remember. I mean, we're six years into it, you know, kind of post 2008. Um, it is just, you know, a phenomenal time. And I think that's why you're seeing these, you know, billion dollar rounds get done. That's why you're seeing these, you know, billion dollar funds getting raised. You know, at Storm, we've kept a relatively small fund. We just closed 180 million uh, a month ago. Uh, we announced, so uh, we're trying to kind of stay true to what we're doing, but you know, it's, it's good time. There's a lot of change. I mean, the, you know, the flip side of that is I think without question, you guys just you know, see what you think. Right now, there's the most change in IT that I have seen in my 15 years as a venture investor. And that change yeah. is what venture investors and startups really thrive on. Yeah. That's, that, that's, what, that's what drives these companies' growth. Yeah, so. I totally agree with that. I think in IT, in the enterprise, it's the confluence of, I hate to use the consumerization of IT because it's been overused, but, but there really is massive infrastructure, yeah. software change, business models. I mean, it's just, um, it's really, the most intense and fast. It's and not fast. Like it's accelerated. Well, and it's, and it's, that, it's that dynamic movement that gives the opportunity for startups because startups can be agile. They really don't execute, they don't necessarily have better engineers than big, big companies, but they can be agile. They can move really fast and turn on a dime. Yeah. And that's, I think, why so many are finding success today. Oh, yeah, it is, it, if we know the only thing that, that is constant in the industry is the increasing you know, pace of change, and open source is driving a lot of that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you know, I, I lived in the infrastructure side for most of my career, and you know, standards just took forever. Yes. Um, you know, I look at, like uh, Paul Moritz from Pivotal said, you know, I had no choice but to go to open source because it would take me too long to get there. So. Right. That's what, what they have to do. What, what, what's your take on kind of the PaaS discussion? We've kind of danced around it a little bit. Uh, you know, this week here we talked to Red Hat about OpenShift, um, and you know, many people are saying the kind of the distinction between infrastructure and platform as a service uh, is, is passe. Uh, you know, wh what's your take on that piece? Um, I think that to the extent containers continue, generic containers, whether you're using you know Do Docker, Alexi, whatever, continue to gain momentum, I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on people deploying PaaS. I mean, that's the simple answer. Because if you think, I mean, that's really where containers evolved from. I mean, PaaS really deserves the credit for, I think, innovating around that technology to begin with. But, you know, why deploy a prescriptive container methodology if you can deploy containers in general? So I think that's, that's going to be the challenge for the PaaS guys going forward. You know, we'll see. Yeah, and also but, but, um, but I will say this, the technology basis was right. I mean, that's, that's the direction things are headed, so, so who knows? What's your take on microservices? The buzzword's been kicked around, microservices. Sure. Um, it's become kind of a hipster word in, in, the open, in the cloud community. I mean, what the hell is microservices? <laughs> is, it, is it, I mean, we had the guys from Kubernetes explain to us what it is, but it's a new class of service within the cloud. You've been I following that? The, uh, of course I've been following. I think it's always a danger in trying to explain hipster words when you're not a, you're not a hipster. Uh, you're a dinosaur like <laughs> us. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> no, you're not. No, but look, I mean, all these applications okay. have to take advantage of a bunch of other services, and as we think about them from a, from a Linux, from a stack standpoint, and those services, they're micro in the sense that they're you know, being taken advantage of from a container. That's, that's, that, that's how I think about it. That's really all it is. All right, Ryan Floyd with Storm Ventures, founder and partner of Storm Ventures, investing since 2000. Again, great change in the enterprise, very focused on the enterprise. I know that's your, your focus. Again, great opportunity. Um, the cloud is a lever of opportunity for entrepreneurship. So contact Storm uh, Ventures if you're interested in getting some cash. He's the money. Here in Opus Community, we're theCUBE. We'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs>